All right, guys, I'm Ruben. And I'm up. And this time I'm like on SCP. Bang! Goodbye! Ruben. Hi, Matt. Hi. It's great to be back. It is. And I tell you what, it's been a really long time since we tried to sound like Tom Morello. It has. <laughs> I think it was over two years ago. Was it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How time flies. When you're having fun. Yes. So today we're going to try and sound like Tom Morello with zero budgets. Yeah, no budget at all. So we're just going to go hog wild as it were. Hog wild in the realms of rage and audio slave. Let's go. Come for a walk. Come for a stroll. We're actually, distance. we're going to go to the fender section. We thought we'd go this way. That's nice. Just want to float down the stairs. Look at that, see? Smooth as hell. Anyway, there are so many guitars Tom Morello uses. Uh, obviously, he's got his, I forget the name of the main one. What's the name of it now? Feed the Home, Arm Feed, the Homeless. Arm the Homeless, Arm which is, homeless. it's a That's blue. It's like kit built thing. Yeah, it looks kind of like a Kramer with EMG, well, EMGs uh, and Floyd. And, Floyd. Yeah. and that's his main Tom Morello guitar. That's go. He has a few, obviously, which are really, really famous. We're going to try and do some Rage and some Audio Slave. Yep. Um, so I was thinking telly. He uses a black and white 1980s Mexican telly. Well, in the last Sounds Like episode, we did use a Telecaster. Telly Deluxe, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And I think Our custom. we had to, we need the ability to do the switch thing. We do. Where you have one pick a bar, one on, and then... Know your enemy. Yep. <laughs> I was suggesting we should use a Les Paul, because he plays gasoline on a Les Paul. There's That's a lot true. of the audio stuff, slave stuff on a Les Paul, and it can do the... We have a limitless budget, so we could in theory, get both. Oh, we should absolutely get both. Should we get both and then just try and see what happens? Yes, so we should we start with the Les Paul Custom? Let's do it. He plays an Orange Burst Les Paul Custom. Um, orange Burst. So here are the Les Paul Customs. Okay, so there are no Les Paul Customs on the wall. No. Which is a shame. It's the Blues Master 59 Les Paul Believer. I'm a believer. It's pretty Jimmy Pagey. He plays an Orange Burst Les Paul, right? Or did? He did, I know he did. So I'm saying, use this, five and a half Gs, like, you know, no small amount of money there. It's not. Um, Mike, do you want to go? <gasps> so we're running a bit low on custom shop fenders, to be honest, and they've been shunned from the boutique room for some reason, unbeknownst to me. That turquoise one is beautiful. I was going to say, beautiful. Seafoam turquoise. <laughs> um, look at this Lake Placid one. Look at this candy apple red one. Oh, which one? So Tom Morello's uh, 80s Mexican telly is maple uh, fretboard, maple neck. We could go Mexican, but when you've got an unlimited budget, why wouldn't you just get a custom shop? Wow. Um, so this candy apple red one's really nice. These are all actually exactly the same spec as Pete's, Pete's purple telly, which everybody knows and loves who watches Anderson's TV because it's a great guitar. Um, we really do have a nice choice. Probably not this one because of the pickup config. But that's really nice. This is this is my favourite. I'd love to have this. This is like a classic telly, really. That's like a bit of Springsteen. I'm going to go Candy Apple Red because personally, I really like Candy Apple Red. Okay. And you've got a kind of I've reddish. I've got this. Yeah. Next so one. these are our Tom Morello guitars. This is our duo of beauties. Oh yeah. Okay. So amplifiers. Tom Morello uses a JCM 800. By Marshall. With a PV cab, 412. There we go. So we have a JCM 800 to hand. Yes, but we can't get a PV 412. No, so could we use a Marshall? What, do you know what speakers it was? It's Greenback 412. Fine. Which isn't really the sound, to be honest. However, um, were you going to use the, because you have to crank that, we need to use the Universal Audio Oxbox. A bit of an attenuation. Um, so yeah, with well, the other option we've got is we could take this Vertical 212 by Marshall. Jubilee. Read the Silver Jubilee cab. That might be closer. We could even take this EVH 5150 212 if it's about the drivers in the cab. Oh, there's 1936. 
I reckon we'll go with a 412. We've got a vintage 412 and a modern 412. Fine. Both Marshalls. Let's do that. Okay, right, let's go get some pedals. Right, pedals. Um, we need to find basically the same rig that Tom uses. Digitech Whammy DT? Well, if, yeah, because you can't get the original one anymore, so yeah, the DT. We need the... Crybaby. A phaser. Yeah, he uses DOD as well. A DD3. DD3. Basically, we have a list we of have pedals list. to sound so, like Tom Morello. We're going to go shopping. Yeah, let's That's find out. Boss. We're going to use the Boss G7 when Matt finds out which key it is to get in the cabinet. There this are is so all, many keys. This is often the battle at Anderton's, is not knowing which key I need gets to you through the door. I need to update my key training. I mean, I think he's been through maybe five. <laughs> and it's just not happening. <laughs> Some of them go in, but they don't turn. So I think we've pretty much got every pedal we can find in the store on the shop floor. We have. We just need to pick up the whammy and the delay. Yes, this is a really cool. That's the Phase 90 limited, limited edition. Yeah. G7. Klein McCoy Wah. And the TR2. And the TR2 tremolo. And then we've got our custom shop Les Paul, custom shop uh, Telly. And JCM 800s. Yeah. Cab. It's four, gonna sound 12. big. That's what I hope. See you in the video room. Ciao. Back in the video room. We are back in said video room. We are, it's trying to sound like Tom Morello. We're trying our very damnedest. Without a budget in mind. No budget, so this is a um, buy busting the bank. So the bank is considerably busted. It is. And actually, this is the very first time we've taken liberties and borrowed more cash than we could ever pay back. And we got for two guitars. We have gone for two guitars. Plus a bass. Should we dive straight into what's going on? I think we should. Okay. First, There's a lot to get through. First thing we started with is the Offender Custom Shop Telly. This is a Candy Apple Red uh, relic, heavy relic telly with a maple board. And this is, as per the specs of Pete's purple telly, so if you were to buy this, it would be identical in terms of the feel and vibe, but just a different colour. How many times could you say Pete's purple telly? Pete's purple telly, Pete's purple telly, Pete's purple telly, Pete's purple telly. I could, no. I could go on, but... Three, yeah. okay. I was the answer. <laughs> sounds really nice. It's a really, really nice guitar. Um, one of those, picked it off the shelf, played it, it's immediately nice to play. Yeah, it should be, because yeah. it's, a, it's a lovely top of the range guitar. It's like nearly four grand, I think, for this. Something like that. It's, hef it's hefty. It's it a hefty. Um, and there's quite a big rig going on here. Um, all the pedals bar the whammy are in the loop because we checked that that's what Tom actually does. We looked it up. Um, Although we did move the whammy out of the loop. Because it wasn't kind of working. It was a bit kind of half powered, so we put it in front at the end just to give it the kind of Morello. Yes. And we'll go back, because I do want to say something about that, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Okay. Um, the other guitar we are using is this? a, that is a, a 58 Les Paul from the custom shop. It's 4,500, no, 5,400 pounds for that guitar. So it's pretty cheap. Yeah, and we dropped it into drop B so that we could play gasoline. No, it, on a serious note, it is beautiful. That and it feels, really it's nice. got a really, really nice weight to it, actually. Yeah, I was thinking the same. Yeah. It's actually not too bad. Yeah. A lot of Les Pauls are quite chunky and heavy, but that one's really nice. <laughs> Thank you. 
So then that's going straight into, well, bar the whammy being in the front, it's going straight into a Marshall JCM 800. We're attenuating it using the Universal Audio Ox box. We're running the master at three quarters and the gain pretty high, so it would be deafeningly loud. But it does get you the sound of Tom Morello. Like it, it's, it's funny. Sometimes you just go, oh, okay, this is all the gear this guy used. Let's get it all and see what happens. And it, it just straight out of the box sounds pretty close. I think this was one of those. Absolutely. There wasn't, we weren't tweaking for hours. It was just like, okay, this, this works. Yeah, and it has the... It's immediately That's the sound. so great. It is, isn't it? Like, I don't know. It's just, he used the neck pickup on a telly and that gives you the, the tone. You really don't have to do very much. Mm. And you've just got that kind of... Brilliant. It's immense. And that is awesome. By that the way, awesome. that's a Clyde McCoy wire. Yes, and that's a great colour. It that is. is a great colour. It keeps catching the light from where I'm sitting. It looks amazing. Really, really quite like this telly. Yeah. So maybe we should talk about what's going on in the loop de loop. Loop de loop. Scoop de de poop. <laughs> Scoop de de loop de loop. Um, <laughs> so actually, we're starting with the uh, wah. It's the first thing in the loop. Weirdly enough, he has his wah on his unusual. loop, but he does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then that goes into the TR2, which is a tremolo. That was it's just the sound, isn't it? I mean, yes. Like a stone and stuff. Straight away, yeah, yeah. Um, immense. Uh, and then that runs, that was going to run back into the whammy, which it doesn't. But it's anymore. now going back into the delay. Yeah. It goes into the DD3. Almost didn't get used. I used it in the kind of verse vibe on Shadow on the Sun yep. uh, by Audio Slave. that into the GE7 equalizer, which I messed around with to try and get a thicker tone. So for example, the beginning of Gasoline, it starts not as heavy. Mm. And when the band kicks in, obviously oh, it's double track, so it gets really heavy. It's great. So I just kicked that in to give me more mid-range. And, and we've done that, like we've gone on about before, but we've, yeah. we've used that a lot, especially in the without busting, just to give everything a push. And it does, it does that. It really worked. Mm. Um, Every, also, I think everyone should own an EQ pedal, just saying. I agree, absolutely. Um, something else you can get to do really nicely is if you push the kind of mids and low mids up, you get a real grunt. So this is without. And then if I throw it in. So I guess I will show you really quickly, we've got that to show you and then the wah and the whammy. So quickly on the wah, keep turning this off. Again, this did my kind of... Um, <laughs> I'm not playing Pinga again. <laughs> <laughs> that was really that good was last great. time. So that, that's the wah pedal. Yep. Actually, in the loop, it's interesting that it's, I guess, just it works. I've never experienced the wah in the loop, so I've I was really surprised. I've always used them straight ahead, just last in the chain. Yeah, but that's a great wah as well. It's, pe it's pretty expensive, but it's great for the money. Mm. Um, so then... The whammy is where the magic happens for me. Yeah, so this is the whammy DT. Now, I'm just going to say this. If you want the Tom Morello whammy sound, you're not going to get it using the Whammy DT. 
I just have to be honest. Cause I mean, you'll get, you'll get to like you get a whammy eight, sound. Eight, 80%. Yeah, you'll get I'd a whammy say. sound, but you won't get the Tom Morello whammy sound because that was the first edition whammy. Yes. And the thing is, sorry for the hum, but the thing is that it's a really specific thing and mm. he uses it a lot. And if you're going for the Tom Morello vibe... If you really want that. You're really going to have to find the original yeah, one. Yeah, eBay. Because much to my surprise, I thought, you know, just put it up second octave, we'll do the solo in uh, Killing Your Name. And it kind of, it was there, but it's not the sound. <laughs> But it's still like, it's, they're still great fun. Yeah, And they yeah, do yeah, so yeah. much. So I guess if you're not trying to be Tom Morello, but you want that kind of the pitch shifty octave thing. Yeah. Then, yeah, these are great. Yeah, sorry to disappoint, but that's just, that's just how I feel, all right? It's just how I feel. It's fine. Um, but let me give you an example. So the part they actually plays is. But you tremolo pick it. And then you play in quarters on the whammy, so you go. And that's how you do it. Amazing. This guy, it's like, it's kind of. It's like Edge. It's I was just about to say it's like the Edge, <laughs> and I was like, do I want to say that? Is, are people going to say that the wrong way? But no, it is. Simple ideas executed perfectly. That's, yeah. That's what it is. That's what this is all about. And a great, great, great tone. It is great. Great. Last, I'll just show you real quick the Les Paul, just because it's out and ready to go. And it is hopefully still in tune for drop B. Cool. And this is how we did a bit of gasoline vibage. <laughs> I should add that I threw on the G7. It's like, it's like, I don't know how to describe that playing sensation, but because it's so flappy, you're really like gentle. <laughs> really, really delicate. But it sounds so aggressive, but it does. And it does. It's kind of, a, I've always thought the intro of that song was really boxy, and I never ever associated with a Les Paul until, because no. I started looking into it, and it's, it's, well, it's a really great sound. You can do the light my way there. <laughs> Oh, it's great. Yeah, you have to be, we, we didn't restring this because we didn't think that it'd be very sensible putting really heavy gauge yeah. on a five and a half thousand pound guitar. I must admit, there's me there, it was really aggressive, loud know. sound going, this tiny little picking <laughs> in there. You notice if you hit it a little bit harder, it kind of goes, well. Yeah, it will. But anyway, beautiful guitar. That is the Tom Morello rig. Yeah, that what is about, it. What about Timmy C, what were you doing? Tim Comerford, right. I'm going to caveat this because he's, I love Tim Comerford and I love Rage and he's a fantastic bass player. Um, so I hope I did him justice. But yeah, this is your Music Man Stingray 5 in this kind of banana yellow. It's probably not called that. It is such a lovely looking bass. But it's a fantastic looking bass. And this baked maple neck is awesome to play. And I love the neck joint here as well. It's basically a lovely, lovely bass. Um, very much recommended. And that's just going straight into the Fender Rumble 100. Um, 
Yeah, which is our staple bass amp. Yeah, for some contextual context. I'd say exactly, exactly. There are some bits, especially in um, Killing the Name, which bass is just required. Yeah. would be the entirety of this particular episode of Sound Like. It would. Let us know how you think we did. Um, let us know if you thought we sounded like Tom Morello. And let us know who else you'd like us to sound like. Links in the description box. Last I've been Rabia. And I've been Matt. And this has been like sound on... Anderson's and stuff. <laughs> Bye. Ciao. Ciao.